Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's MySys Tips and Tricks video. This week, we want to talk about job shop MRP. That is different than the standard MRP that we might be used to running from the planning module under master production schedules, where MySys looks at all the inputs and outputs that are currently in the system and does the planning based on shortages, the difference between the inputs and the outputs. So if you have any stock on hand, or if you have any items that are on a purchase order that are expected to arrive within a certain period of time, all of those get considered as MISIS is running the standard MRP with the massive production schedules. There is another type of MRP, which is more commonly used in job shops. And that's what we're going to focus on today. So for that purpose, let's go ahead and create a new manufacturing order. Let's build a, one of our standard items, um, maybe I-50. This is an assembled item. Uh, we decide to build it in location one, and we're going to build 10 of that. And let's populate that from the bill of material. So we have all our materials coming in directly. As you might already know, if an item is not available in the required quantity in MISIS, in a manufacturing order material tab, that line for that item will turn yellow. All of these lines not being yellow tells me that every material as required is currently available. So when I look at the required quantities and the item stock next to it, I see that I have plenty of stock on everything except one item showing zero. And the reason for that is resource. As you know, MISIS doesn't keep inventory of resource items. They're unlimited. So even though this is zero, that's by nature of item type resource, and it will not be a shortage. So if you were to run a standard MRP, barring any other manufacturing orders or anything else being in the system, this would not produce any shortages. However, when we are actually running job shop MRP, what we are saying to the system is, do not look what's on order, do not look what's on stock, focus on what is the required quantity and purchase or build those items. So in this case, I'm going to release the manufacturing order and once it's released, I can use this uh, white page with a green arrow facing right button, which is the create MRP. So you can buy material for this manufacturing order. If I do not untick, include parts for this child manufacturing orders, include parts for sub assemblies, then all it will buy are these items here. So let's do an example this way first. I click buy. And it says, do you want to create purchase orders? Yes, that's what I want to do. Notice that I have seven, line he seven lines here. However, only four lines populated in my process MRP buy screen. And the reason for that is, while well, assembled items are not purchased, unless I tick this box here, and you happen to have a supplier assigned to these, uh, one of these or both of these assembled items, then it would come through. In this case, we don't. And also resource items uh, we are not buying. So the four raw materials that are shown here are being purchased. And in what quantities? Well, if we expand this window a little bit, you'll notice that the shortages are as the required quantities. I-17 is my second line here. Required quantity is 10. MISIS is suggesting that I buy 10. And the required date is what? Today, because that's when I have my manufacturing order here uh, needing this item. Uh, we would have to dig into the day uh, within the bill of material. And it looks like it's showing the fourth day. Uh, requiring uh, this item as it starts on 2.11, unless there's a weekend there. Um, and then similarly for all items, I-19, if I look at I-19 here, my requirement is 20. The whole total shortage is 20, so it's trying to buy 20 again by the 2.15th date. And 40 for this, it's trying to buy it on 2.14. 
and then 216 for 10 for I-36. So I can just go item by item, click by item, or just hit buy all and automatically create uh, purchase orders for all four of these. And it'll start creating that by PO35. We wanna ship to location one. We wanna do as required and create orders. Once we are done, this is going to create four of our purchase orders. And obviously, because we are trying to bring them in of today or tomorrow, then we're getting some lead time warnings. And it seems actually, I have more problems than that. You must specify a supplier that is qualified to supply item I-40 and I-45. That is coming up because we have ticked that box for purchasing assembled items, right? So if we untick that, that would not be an issue, but our lead times would still be an issue. And if I create production orders after that, it'll go and create the work orders or rather manufacturing orders, whichever you choose really, for the two assembled items. So requirement is 10. Again, looking at here, requirement is 10 for both of them. And both of these items are being required at 10. If I hit build all and I select manufacturing orders, you can select either one, but I select manufacturing orders and you can uh, build those. And because this is a job shop, if you actually had a job number that has already been created, you could have assigned it not only to the manufacturing orders, but to your purchase orders as well. So any cost related to this uh, job would be recorded under the same job bucket. Create. And here are two manufacturing orders for I-40 and I-45, and we are done. So if we had selected include parts for sub-assemblies, then on the purchasing step, it will try to buy any parts that are part of these assembled items as well. And that is a way that we run Job Shop MRP to easily create our purchase orders and manufacturing orders without any regard to on-hand stock or on-order quantities on purchase orders that are currently out there. Hope this helps you use MySys more effectively.